<clears throat> Come on. Get some. Hey, action. Woo! Sorry about that, Fraggle. Ah, it's okay. I'm getting used to it. It's just, with no action right here, there's nothing to do. There's only so many times I can watch the most action-packed movie ever. Romeo and Michelle's High School Reunion. Well, before he shot Grant in the head, we did do a weekly tutorial show. Why don't you do that? Eh, that sounds super lame and boring. Why don't you do it? Well, that's not really my job, Ben. Oh, but I insist. Ooh. You ever see that scene in Scanners when that dude's head blew up? Uh, hey guys, welcome to... Uh, what the hell does he say? Look, I'm gonna level with you. I have no idea what I'm doing, so let's just check out a request, shall we? Well, it looks like you guys want a muzzle flash tutorial. So today we're doing advanced muzzle flashes. And by advanced, I mean we ain't just slapping a muzzle flash on it and saying, done. We're also gonna add a round ejecting and some smoke. To do this, we'll be using the Action VFX Muzzle Flash Pack, as well as their Gun Sound Effects Pack. Now, before we get into it, let's talk about muzzle flashes a little. Basically, it's that flash of light that comes out of a gun when it fires. Now there's two things that can help you sell this effect better in camera, and they're super easy. One, use a gun that has a working slide. By that I mean, when you pull the trigger, a part of the gun kicks back. Most toys you'll find online these days state, working slide. And two, when your actor pulls the trigger, instruct them to blink when they do, as most, if not all people do blink when firing a gun, thanks to both the sound and the brightness of the muzzle flash. So, I'm gonna do my best grand impression, and let's just get this over with. Okay guys, you know where we are and you know what we're doing. Just excuse the echo if there is one. I'm recording this down in the basement at work, so is what it is. I'm not inside the studio at the moment and I just want to bang this one out. So if we check out our comp, you can see the action fires off his gun twice. As you can see, the slide goes back just as I mentioned earlier. So if we head over to the project settings, you can see I've imported a few different muzzle flashes and a round spinning from the Action Effects gun pack. If you check out the website, you'll see they have a ton of them on a bunch of different angles, as well as some sweet sound effects. Their 50% off sale is still going on until the end of May, so feel free to check them out. Okay, so our first step is to import our muzzle flashes into the comp. So let's start with the first. Let's head along the timeline until we see our shot. Easy to see since our slide on the gun goes back. We'll then hold shift and drop our first muzzle flash in on top. There we go. Let's then position it into place and if you need to, hit S and scale it up or down to suit your shot. You may also need to hit S and rotate as well. Right, that looks pretty good. Once you're happy, head forward one frame, hit Ctrl Shift D to split the clip and delete that excess off the end. Let's then move along the timeline to the next shot, right here, and we'll repeat those steps. Import, position, scale, rotate, move ahead one frame, split the clip, and delete the excess. Let's then change the transfer mode on both to screen, and let's check out a preview. Not bad, we've got our muzzle flashes in place, but it's time to sell the effect. Next step, adding a little tail to that second shot. Now by that, I mean I want to add an extra frame of muzzle flash and shrink that muzzle flash down just to add some variance between the two shots. So let's duplicate that second muzzle flash, shift forward one frame, and then we'll scale it down a touch. There we go. And of course, we'll reposition it back into place. I'm also going to head up to Effect, Blur and Sharpen and add a directional blur and just crank that up a little. That way it doesn't look like we've used the exact same muzzle flash and just scaled it down. It adds a bit of variance and it's subtle enough that you don't notice it. Now if we check out a preview, I know it's not much of a change, but it's the little things that help sell an effect. Speaking of selling, it's time to sell it more with some glow. To do this, let's grab all of our muzzle flashes, hit Ctrl D to duplicate them, and then we'll select the first flash right here, head over to Effects and Presets, and type Fast Blur. Let's then drop that bad boy on right here. We'll then crank that blur amount up until it looks good to you. As you can see, it gives our image a nice hazy blur that softens our flash, but also enhances it. From there, let's highlight the blur effect, copy it, and then paste it over the other duplicate muzzle flashes. Now, let's check out a preview. Getting better. Now, let's finish off our muzzle flash with one last cherry on top, or in our case, a little smoke puff. If you head to the description down below, I've got a download link for the smoke puff that we used in our Spider-Man web episode. We're just gonna repurpose that right here. All you need to do is simply head to the point of that muzzle flash, drag and drop our puff in on top of the flash, position it into place, and change the transfer mode to screen. 
repeat that again for any other muzzle flashes in your shot. Now if we check out a preview, it's looking pretty damn good. And guess what? We only have one more step and that's adding a shell ejecting from our gun. To do that, we're going to grab this round spinning video from the Action VFX gun pack. And guys, I'll say it right here. If you don't have this pack, all these steps will work and apply for any other muzzle flashes and round animations that you do have. Now I'm going to head to the point of our flash on the timeline, drop our round video in and position it into place. And just like with our muzzle flash, you may need to scale or rotate this one to match your shot. Right here looks pretty good for me. From there, all we have to do is hit P to bring up our position data, hit the stopwatch, head forward one frame, move the shell up a little, like so, head forward one more frame, and move it out of our shot. We can then have a bit of a play with those position frames to create a little bit of an arc. There we go. Now if you're lazy or just can't be buggered doing that again because your gun doesn't really move, you can just duplicate what we just animated. Move that clip along the timeline to our next flash, and just reposition the first frame. We'll then turn on motion blur for the comp and those shells, and done. The end result looks like this. Okay gang, I am back in the studio right now, and I just wanted to answer one last thing that you may have a question about. And that is, how did I remove the orange tip on the end of my gun? Well, it's a pretty simple process. All I did was duplicate my footage, or you can use an adjustment layer, and then I drew an elliptical mask just around that orange tip. I then headed up to effect, color correction, and added a tint. From there, I just collapsed the mask menu down, hit the stopwatch on mask path, and then I just animated that mask frame by frame to cover up that orange nozzle. And that's it really. Nothing more spectacular than that. Hey guys, I did forget one thing while I was recording at work, and that's the light fall off. You've got to add some light fall off to the scene because you've got a big flash of light coming out of your muzzle, so let's do that right now. First thing we're going to do is just add an adjustment layer. From there, we're going to grab the pen tool and draw a rough mask around that actor, basically in any point where you think the light should affect them. So over here on the arm, up on the face, and just down the chest, and maybe a little bit on the hand just there. From there, I'm just going to hit F and feather it out 200 pixels because it's supposed to be a sort of faint thing, nice and subtle. So that amount of feathering will definitely make it subtle. Now our next step from there is to head up to effect, color correction and add exposure. And we're just gonna crank it up until it looks like it's blowing at the image just a little bit. There we go. From there, my next step's gonna be, I'm gonna drag that adjustment layer so it's just over my footage. I don't want it to affect the muscle flashes and blow them out or any of the other assets that I've got on top of my footage. And our last step should be pretty simple, guys. All we're gonna do is just trim the adjustment layer so it only is on screen when our muzzle flash is on screen. So just the one frame for our first muzzle flash and two frames on our second muzzle flash. And if we check out a side-by-side -side comparison, in only a few steps and a few minutes, we've made a pretty sweet muzzle flash effect, including a shell ejecting. Nice. Add up all of those steps and you get something like this. Hey, action. Sorry about that, Fraggle. Ah, it's okay. Ooh, outro. It's action's time to shine. Hmm? <laughs> so that's advanced muzzle flashes in Adobe After Effects using Action VFX gun assets. Now you can use other muzzle flash packs, but with 50% off all their packs for the entire month of May, why the hell would you? That's stupid. You ain't stupid, are you? Are you? Now I know you enjoyed this episode, so karate chop that like button and share it to your fingers bleed. If you ain't subscribed, it's right here, as well as our Patreon info right here. We got even more awesome crap over here, and that's that social media bull crap above my head. But until next time, keep learning, and Action Jackson 